For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kendall Alexander. David Hyatt lived on the street I grew up on in the Bronx, New York. Many of my earliest childhood memories involved David and Davin, David's son, who remains one of my closest friends to this day. Circumstances have made it impossible for me to be in Miami with y'all today, or else I would have been there and looked 10 pounds lighter. I've been asked to speak a little bit about David, and in particular, the last few weeks of his life from my perspective, my spiritual perspective, that is. See, in my life, I have, oh, I've seen too many clear manifestations of the presence and power of God to ignore when he is sending a message. In David's case, God sent a message. Well, over the past 15 years, I have been in contact with David, you know, doing what I can to help him get released from prison. Most of you know David was relentless. So when my longtime friend, Ed Ryan, and his colleagues at Colora LLP agreed to take David's case and no cost to David, the following months were intense. Those of us who had seen David fight so long and hard to get released knew what this new glimmer of hope meant to him and his closest family and friends. But it seemed that the closer we got to obtaining David's release, the more sick he became. It just didn't make sense. So it would strike most of us as tragic and sad that David passed before he obtained his freedom, right? But I received a different message from God. On August 10th, June received a call that David's condition had worsened to a critical point. Rainey took off on a nine hour journey to meet with June to see David. Rainey called me. Now, when Rainey called, I always took the time to pray for her. It didn't matter where I was, Walmart, Sam's Club, at the office, the gym, the one time I went. The moment I picked up the phone, it was clear Rainey was overcome with emotion, totally inconsolable. I immediately instructed her to pull over in the Carolinas and listen to what I had to say. But there was nothing to say, nothing that wouldn't ring hollow to a grieving woman. So I began to pray, I mean, a hard prayer, a warrior prayer. I then read from the Bible. I don't know what made me do it, but I randomly opened my Bible to the book of Job, chapter 7, as I was sitting in my office. I took a deep breath and began to read. Now, let's make something clear. I'm no preacher, or pastor, or Bible scholar. I'm just a spiritual guy who reads a good book from time to time and believes in the power of prayer and the reality of the constant war against the enemy and powers and principalities. So when I began to read Job, I had no idea what I was in for. Chapter seven says things like, isn't slavery everyone's condition on earth? Our days like those of a hired worker? Like a slave, we pant for a shadow, await our tasks like a hired worker. So I have inherited months of emptiness. Nights of toil have been measured out for me. If I lie down and think, when will I get up? Nights drag on, and restless thoughts fill me until dawn. Remember that my life is wind. My eyes won't see pleasure again. The eyes of him who sees me will see me no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall no longer be. Now, this is not very encouraging stuff here. Pretty depressing if you ask me. The book of Job, however, ends with God finally speaking to Job after taking everything away from him and seemingly abandoning him. He explains to Job that everything he put him through was a test. How many of us had those, right? A trial designed to humble him and strengthen his trust in the power of the Almighty. I read to Rainey that day from Job chapter 7, verses 1 to 17. David Hyatt passed away the following morning at 717. While it's easy to chalk this up as a simple coincidence, I believe it to be more than that. In the Bible, check for yourself, the number 7 is considered to be the number of totality or divine completion. In fact, in older traditions, God completed his molding of the earth when he created man on the seventh day of the seventh month 
of the Hebrew calendar. I mean, 17 is also an important number in the Bible. It is considered to represent overcoming the enemy and achieving complete and total victory through God. The 17th mention of the word love comes when Paul states that it is the greatest gift of all. Why? Because God's unending love is truly victorious over all things. I mean, I believe that the seemingly random reading of Job 7 through verse 17 and the passing of David at 717 symbolizes a message from God that David completed his mission here on earth as the number seven represents. And that David, through his passing, overcame those who had been fighting so hard to keep him in prison by obtaining the ultimate freedom through God. Now, there's no denying that the life of David bears a great deal of similarities to the life of Job for all those who are familiar. Like Job, David went through trials, quite literally, which tested his faith and his belief in the Lord. He had his freedom taken away from him. I mean, everything, family, just everything. And was subjected to punishment and suffering. We all know where he was. But David maintained his faith in God. And when his son Davin collected his belongings from prison, he found his Bible, in which David had highlighted very, very few passages. One of the highlighted verses was Matthew 18, verse 19, which declares, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. A fact that we can count on is that God gives meaning to our life, no matter how difficult that life may be, by changing the meaning of our death. So for those of us who think it's tragic and sad that David died before he obtained freedom, not to worry. Because God said, it's not that David passed before he obtained his freedom, but that David's passing was the vehicle to his ultimate freedom. Thanks to all for listening, and to the family and friends who gave me the opportunity to be heard. Rainy, your honor, resilience, and bravery is unmatched. June, you're a virtuous woman of God, a true prophetess, and an example to us all. Glory, hallelujah. Dad, we'll continue to honor your dad in death, just as hard as we fought for him in life, bro. And I must give special thanks to my good friend, Ed, who worked tirelessly on David's appeal and refused to take a single penny from his family. It is in large part because of your firm's work, along with all those who supported David, that David passed away with hope in his heart. True hope. Finally, and most importantly, I would like to thank David Lincoln Hyatt, the chief, the chief. The hope, strength, and positivity which you displayed during your life, and especially throughout your hardest moments of life, is something which we should all strive to emulate. In life, you inspired all those who encountered you, and in death, you brought us all together. David, from the bottom of my heart, thank you much respect and continue to rest in peace with the Almighty. You know, if a story like this changed one person and inspired one person to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, then I'm a complete failure. Because a story of this magnitude should lead more of our people to the love of Christ and to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So today, I don't want to be cliche, but let's not mourn. Let's honor David. Let's celebrate David. And for all you guys who know how honorable he was, I ask you to continue to support his family as he would have done for you guys. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.